Um, we're waiting for one member of the board who is never late, so we're trying to keep in touch with him now. Uh, she could go on the website. They get it off the website, Maybe off the town house. website and zoning board. That it's on there. Well, okay, who's, who's going to receive yeah. this? Who's this go to? That's probably who should start. Uh, 
Tonight's um, ZBA meeting um, is being recorded for RCTV live, uh, Comcast Channel 22, or Verizon Channel 33. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob, and if you wanted to check, you can go to www.rctv.org uh, for more information on playtimes. Um, Normally, the way we start out um, is to read the public notice. Uh, this is a continuation. We're looking at case number 18-05, um, which is uh, 119 Salem Street. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hear public hearing in the Stuckman's meeting room at Town Hall, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass, on Wednesday, May 16, 2018, at 7 p.m on the application of Leah and Mike Montiero, uh, pursuant to Master of the Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9, for special permit uh, under Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.2, to demolish and the existing three-family dwelling and to construct a new two-family dwelling on the property located at 119 Salem Street, Reading, Mass. That was held on the 18th, in the 16th of May. It was continued. Um, to this day, June 20th, 2018. So, um, the first thing I'll do is just open that that uh, public hearing. And um, I will tell you that number one, um, well, let me do this first. As the five member board, we had four members sitting at the present time. Of the four members sitting, three members sat the case uh, originally held in um, May. Um, I do have a fourth member who did view the tape, um, the disc. Uh, I have his certification here. I just signed it, uh, which will go into the public records. Um, that means that there is now four members sitting. So I have to ask uh, Mr. Latham uh, what he wishes to do if he wishes to move forward on this with four voting members, or if he wishes to continue this until it'll be the first. Um, I don't even what the first until session. August, because July is booked for the 40B. Ah, that's right. So this would be an August date. We would like to proceed. Thank you. Okay. Um, we then have four voting members on it. Um, I'll just, we have had a litany of, of uh, communication back and forth from town council. Um, we've asked for anything that we could find uh, on the case. Um, the last, The last information we have from town council was um, February 8th of 2018. Um, as you know, we reviewed that in our initial hearing in May and talked about the option of 7.2. Um, you have that in your in your uh, packet there, I think, Mr. Latham, do you not? Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you if you had some additional information, you were going to do some work on this as background also. Um, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. I'm Attorney Josh Lake. here tonight from the building group. Um, as you know, just to recap quickly, this pertains to the property 119 Salem Street, property situated within the S15 district. Um, the present site is a three-family, a multi-family dwelling 
Uh, Pre-existing non-conforming is our assertion uh, based on a building inspector's letter from 1989. Um, on that basis, the client's proposal is to tear down this pre-existing non-conforming use as a three-family use is not allowed in the S15 district and to instead build a new two-family dwelling. Two-family is also not allowed, but the argument under 7.2 is that that is more conforming than the three-family and certainly not substantially more detrimental than the three-family use that's currently um, at the site. Um, so looking through the zoning bylaw, it's a little bit more complicated than it was five or ten years ago. It used to be a very simple clause. If it was a finding that it was you know, less non-conforming, then you could grant a special permit. Now there are several different uh, caveats to single family, two family, and, and other types of uses. Um, as I read 7.2, and I believe town council is in agreement on this, it does allow that you can grant a special permit if you find that the two family use and proposed reconstruction of this site, uh, as shown in the plan, is not substantially more detrimental. To that point, I would argue that we are actually going to be fixing a front yard setback problem. The current existing dwelling uh, violates the front yard setback. The proposed two-family dwelling would be fully conforming with all the mentioned requirements. Um, in every other way, it will actually conform with zoning except for the, the frontage, which is short by about four feet, and we can't do anything about that. Um, it also states within 7.2 that you can approve structural alteration. So really what we're looking at is we're, we're also approving both the change in the use from a three to a two family and also the plans that are shown to show that we're going to rebuild in the location as proposed. So based on this analysis, our hope is that tonight you can make the finding that both the use and the structural change are not substantially more detrimental and on that basis issue a special permit uh, to allow this project. I think we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Let's start to this end, uh, Eric. Um, well, I think the the big question that we had last time was, what is its status? Is it legal and non-conforming? I think that the building inspector's letter from 1989, town council, and current building inspector all agree that it is, and I am prepared to agree with them on that. So, I. I think that they make a very good argument with the uh, conforming uh, dimensional requirements, um, obviously except for the frontage, and that the two-family use is more in line with the zoning of the district than a three-family, and I, I don't have any issue with it. So that's what I've got. Sorry. I'm the member that wasn't present at the last <laughs> meeting, but I did watch the video of the meeting, and uh, I kind of echo what uh, uh, Mr. Hagstrom has said. I, uh, I think this, and I, I, I did read here tonight a letter that says from the inspector buildings going way back that, that this existing three family is essentially grandfathered and illegal nonconforming. So based on what you're doing and what I've watched and what I uh, have heard briefly this evening, I don't personally have a problem with this one. Okay. Nick? Um, I'm just going to echo what the other two board members said. I think this would fit better um, in neighborhood character, and I don't find it to be any more um, detrimental to the neighborhood, either with the use or the structure. Um, as a member uh, of the board, I had uh, some struggles with this um, three-family, two-family, um, the use aspect of it. Uh, we seem to go back to the assessor's cards and the assessor's um, view of what a piece of property has in terms of use and um, It, it seems to be diluted from the fact that the, assess, the assessor's office does not look at zoning, it does not look at anything but how it, it sees it being used at the time that it went out to do the evaluation, which kind of complicates matters for everything. Um, 
I would have thought that uh, if it had been used as a two-family, which it appears to have been done, although uh, it was, again, some lack of evidence that was actually provided, uh, it would be a lot easier to move into a, a section 7.2 because it's a one or two family structure. Um, and it is covered under 7.2. 7 um, however, as this board has been asked to do so many times, is uh, fix something that is not working. And um, special permits are an easier way to fix something that is not working than if you were looking for a variance. So um, I would say that in light of what you have presented, what we have gotten back from uh, Stu, uh, Stu, Stu Leclerc back in 1980, I want to move that away and go with Glenn, our present building, building commissioner. Um, that it would seem appropriate um, to remove that particular structure, meet all the other requirements um, of a two-family existing on that particular, even though it is not, in essence, legal, it is non-conforming, um, it would seem it to be appropriate. Um, I guess that's all I would have to say right now. Um, as we did in the past, um, last hearing, I opened it up to anybody in the audience, public information or public uh, input. Uh, if there's anybody who wishes uh, to speak, um, please raise your hand, identify yourself, and we'll hear you. Seeing none, I'm assuming <laughs> that we're all set. Um, so I, I would ask uh, if we have a motion on the table. You have your plan, so I will be happy to do the motion. Huh? If I can borrow your plan, your certified plot plan, I'll be happy to do the motion. You can, yeah, you can borrow mine if I can find it. Hold on. <laughs> no, I haven't. This is right here. Everything except I have one here. Thank you, sir. Okay. And, and this. Oh, I've got those. That's the right one. Okay. All right. I move uh, that the board approve the application of MBA Building Group, who seeks a special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaw 7.2 to demolish the existing three family dwelling and to construct a new family dwelling on the property located at one. Uh, I'm sorry, 119 Salem Street in Reading, Massachusetts, um, as depicted on a certified plot plan uh, dated October 13th, 2017, uh, prepared and stamped by John uh, Sullivan III, uh, professional engineer, and as depicted on architectural renderings uh, prepared by Tectonics Architects, Noted as A1.1 through uh, A2.1, dated April 16th, 2017. Um, I find, I make, a, I make a finding that the uh, two family use and proposed construction um, noted on this application are not substantially more detrimental than the existing conditions. Um, and that's what I've got. Probably should do the uh, the standard uh, conditions. I need your cheat sheet for that side. If I can borrow that too. Uh, like the keeper of records here. <laughs> yes. Thank you, sir. Um, the special permit is subject to the following conditions. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and a proposed foundation plan prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Petitioner shall submit to the building inspector final construction plans for the proposed structure along with the as-built foundation plans for that structure prior to the issuance of a building permit. 
and the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector as built plans of the new structure prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Are we here a second? Second. Any other questions or statements? Hearing none, ready for the vote? All in favor? Let the record show that it's 4-0-0. So we need to stamp the plans that we have here. Hey, uh, this is existing. Petitioners, the same question I asked the former petitioners if they wish to proceed with four members. Um, <clears throat> Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass. On Wednesday, June 20th, 2018 at 7 p.m. on the application of Mary O'Connor pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9, for a special permit under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 7.0, 7.3.2, to construct a two-story addition to an existing non-conforming dwelling on the property located at 41 Lewis Street, Reading, Mass. Um, I would ask anybody who is, uh, well, be before, 
Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the uh, abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following Board of Selectmen, Police Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. If it doesn't hurt, you're going to be sworn in. I swear that the testimony given to me by this <coughs> before me, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses I do. Um, so the petitioner, Mary O'Connor. Yes. Um, I asked you the same question. You need four out of four votes. You need an unanimous. If it were a five-member board sitting here, you need four of the five. Um, can't do that this evening, but you do have the option. If you wish, you can take a will continue the subject matter of this hearing until our earliest next our earliest meeting in August, which will be the first. I don't know what the date is. August first. August first. Oh. August first, or you can proceed with the four members to seating sitting at this present time. Which would you prefer to do? Just to proceed. Proceed. <laughs> you wish to proceed. Okay. You have the floor. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm Dan Reynolds. I was hired by uh, Ms. O'Connor to design the uh, plans for our home at 41 Lewis Street. Uh, we started the process back in February of 2017 by meeting with the building department, um, familiarizing ourselves with the procedures, etc. Uh, we were advised pretty early on that uh, we would need a special permit if we need a variance, and we were kind of encouraged to look at the scope of the work that we were proposing and really evaluate and see if there are there were criteria that we could actually meet. Um, originally, uh, so when I refer to the right side of the home, it's as if you're standing on 41 Lewis Street looking at the home. Uh, the right side, uh, initially we were, we were going to, we were attempting to request to reduce the setback to 13.6 uh, feet, I, I believe. And we were able to, but in reevaluating, we brought that back and we were keeping that at 15, uh, the 15 foot setback. Uh, on the left of the home, there's an existing structure uh, that we are continuing, we're proposing to continue the addition from, which sets further in about six inches from the existing uh, foundation line uh, that, that is there now. Um, the goal, uh, it's a very small home. The, the footprint of the house, um, it is a non-conforming lot. We don't meet the frontage of the 100 feet towards on the front frontage. Uh, it's actually 75. and. In the process of, of working the design, we've really realized and really prioritizing um, that for what the homeowner is looking for, which is definitely first floor living, um, creating a third bedroom, um, we felt that what we were proposing was, was uh, appropriate and wasn't outrageous in the, in the size or the spacing. Um, we did make uh, some compromises in reducing to keep, to meet the right side setback, which included reducing the interior width of the garage down to about 12 foot six, really trying to work the space out. Um, from a design standpoint, I'd be happy to comment on uh, any of the elements, but the program of the addition, uh, again, for being first floor living provides a, a mud room, an actual a laundry room, a stair with safe egress down into the basement, all of these things that this house just never simply had. It was a very, very small original footprint. And by keeping the first floor um, living space, we are proposing that there be a bedroom there as well as a walk-in closet and bathroom for Mary to stay in the home uh, long term. That's kind of the goal here. Um, we do have support of the neighbors, a few of which are here tonight. Um, and again, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys would have. Um, okay, <clears throat> before we proceed. Yes. Um, we, we need to, every case we have, we need to open. Yours is a particularly unique case um, in that uh, you're asking for a special permit to do what you just described. Yes. Um, but also, um, 
we have a situation where you're going to need a variance. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Kristen to go back over and explain exactly how that came about. Um, So originally when the application came in, the original denial letter in 2017 was written out for a variance. Um, so we advertised with a new denial letter calling out a special permit, but then we saw the variance criteria in the packet, and that's when we decided that it needed to be advertised as both. And I think the variance is for the lot coverage. Mm -hmm. And so we went back according to 40A and we did a two-week um, re-advertisement of the variance. So now both the variance has been advertised and the special permit has been advertised. Okay, which is the reason why we can proceed. Otherwise, we were going to have to look at other options. So you're looking at, uh, there'll be questions from the board, but we're looking at now one of the criteria and that's the special permit aspect of it. You also need to uh, present the four criteria needed for a variance. And I would say that your biggest hurdle right now um, is the variance before you can get to the special permit. So I assume that you're prepared to go forward on the four criteria necessary for this board to grant a variance. From Correct, from the letter that I, we submitted uh, back the application back, I assume that's what you're referring to, the four criteria. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's, um, the, the lot itself is truly non-conforming uh, in, in the sense that it's so incredibly small, uh, even given what we're, what we're proposing, uh, we're down to about, it's literally about 200 square feet of, of footprint. Um, that we would need to reduce, including the decks, obviously, as you know, and including the, the dwelling itself. And given the overall scope and scale of the entire project, and obviously we've discussed this uh, with the homeowner, and there's really, it was very difficult to take a further reduction onto that footprint without really compromising these rooms. Um, it's without question what's limiting that approval. I mean, if, if we had, a foot running down one side of the property. If there was, you know, I did. We didn't feel that what we were requesting was was completely unreasonable, um, given the size of that. Um, and one thing to, I'm not. I do also want to point out the main, the footprint of the main addition at the back of the house is truly a one-story addition does not exceed even the ceiling. It's just, the ridge is just barely above the ceiling height of the second floor. Um, there is the proposed addition on the left where we are building a 17 by nine room off of that second floor. But the majority, the vast majority of the addition is on the first floor. Um. Anything else that you want, wanted to present before the board starts asking questions? And you know? um, it's obviously it's it's a difficult case. It's it's something that we we feel that we're so close, um, and as far as provide hardship, etc. For the actual based on the existing footprint of the home and where it's located. Um, even in things like getting an actual functioning garage onto that property, I feel that what we're proposing is as conservative as we can possibly be in, in order to get an actual full single car garage there. Um, and again, in, in it's all of those setbacks. It's um, where I feel that based on the frontage, which we do exceed, we're, we're over the, the, the required frontage and rear yard setback. It's really those side yards, and it's directly contributed to the fact that it's a 75 foot wide lot. So it's really those restrictions that are, are keeping us, and I do feel that we've, so we've just really challenged ourselves to get in there and really manipulate this plan to keep the program that the homeowner is looking for. Um, and this is truly kind of the small.
small as we wanted to see this go. We did look back when we were talking to the building department and thought seriously, and we spoke quite a bit about it, the fact that we're 200 square feet away, and when you start thinking about that, you know, 200 square feet on a footprint and on rooms that are already relatively small, that was really, that was really the issue. We would have to completely eliminate a section of the program, such as a laundry room or mud room or the back stair hall um, or staircase going down to the, the basement egress. Okay. Well, I'll open up to board uh, questions that they may have of you. Um, Nick, do you want to start? Are we just doing questions or statements? Too? Either one. Okay. Um, I'll start with my questions. Um, in question one, response to the variance criteria, you reference ADA requirements. Could you uh, talk about that a little bit? What you meant in keeping the in keeping the the, uh, the footprint actually functioning that you could if somebody needed needed assistance. Uh, again, this is definitely very long term. Mary's planning on staying in this house indefinitely. And when you start looking at the size of a room, such as a family room or the bedroom, literally just access to the side of the bed or access through a room. And, and realistically thinking about just realistic furniture placement, can you still move throughout the room um, with ease? Because we're really, there are no hallways really proposed in the plan at all. We're really relying on the spaces to continue one off the other. Okay. Um, um, so this particular parcel compared to the other parcels on the block, uh, you mentioned it was a small size. Is it particularly smaller than the rest of the parcels on that block? There are a few that are as small. Um, most of them, when you when you glance, are are bigger and larger. Um, okay. But there's a section there, right at that point of Lewis and the, the back street behind it, where they did they were narrower. Okay, and currently there is an existing garage, right? Yes. All right, because you make reference to that about. Uh, in the response one about the location of the garage, and the garage isn't moving, but it's getting a little bit larger, is a that A little correct? bit wider, a little bit longer. Right now it really, um, and I think Mary can speak to this, it doesn't function. It doesn't function to actually open car doors. It wasn't really designed for, and if everything given the age of the house, I don't know if any a, a larger car dating back to the original townhouse would have ever fit in this garage. Okay. And uh, when you created this floor plan, um, was there anything about the shape of the lot besides being small? Uh, I'm talking about more about the soil or the topography that meant so you couldn't we were move things we're, around. Well, we were we were right on the side setbacks. Okay. Um, yeah, you And also, obviously, trying to respect the neighbor in the back. We didn't want to just make this long narrow. In, in fact, the length of it is really drives from the fact that there's so much program in this really tight space. Okay. Um, yeah, you're really close to the 25%, but I noticed um, essentially the building footprint is increasing three times from its original size. Um, and you're telling me you couldn't remove a mudroom or a porch or anything to get to 25%? There's, below lot coverage? If you look, the existing home, we're not changing that, the configuration of that of that floor plan. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not, there's not a, there's not a code clause, meaning that the, the spaces are- In the proposed right. space, there's nothing right. you could shrink. It's really tight. Um, in, in again, just in allowing for door swings, and yes, there is, I wouldn't even really call it a mudroom, but an entry hall from the garage, you, you hit a landing, and and a small amount of cabinetry. I think we were really reasonable with the size of the laundry room, all these proposed spaces. Um, and again, that would allow Mary to live and function right. and not have to worry about going down into the basement to do laundry. Okay. Uh, there's very few spaces in the existing home that could be explored other than to what they are. And the, the existing footprint is definitely built out to the max. Okay. And could you add a little bit more question to if the board was not to grant a variance, how that would create a financial hardship? Uh, in in staying, she'd like to stay. I mean, not having to move, Mary's lived in in Reading all her life. Um, she grew up next door. Uh, well, she and her brother Tom grew up literally next door. Uh, it's just been something that she's been working towards. Um, I don't know how personal if you, you, but Mary works in the neighboring community. Uh, she's an OR nurse. She often has long weekends, long calls. It's just a matter of just a, a lifestyle now that's so well established on Low Street. And okay. Her entire life. And the um, the pr the estimated cost is still about two hundred thirty thousand dollars to do this. That's what we're thinking. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Sorry. 
to his, just to follow up on his point, a question too about hardship. Uh, if you had to make an adjustment in lot coverage by changing the structure in some way, have you have you identified what that would cost to do that accommodation to comply? Uh, it, it's at two hundred. The, the square footage is so low. I don't think it's it's a driving factor yeah. uh, for building per square foot. Meaning, yeah. if a if a room and I, I completely respect what you're saying, but if a room is twenty by twenty or it's twenty two by twenty, the actual construction cost is nothing. so minimal. It's it's the yeah. matter of the foundation. It's a matter of the. It's really not not moving, not having to leave, not having to leave a community because of being priced out or something. Yeah, that was my com that was my. I mean, that's really con conclusion. Yeah. I mean, I, I am very familiar with Lewis Street. I had a relative that lives on Lewis Street, and there's a lot of small properties up there, lots of small, <coughs> and uh, and there's not much you can do if you want to do anything on those lots. Uh, so it's, uh, and I don't have a problem with the variance question one response, and I really don't think it's uh, it's uh, affecting the neighborhood uh, in any detrimental way. So the only thing I was wrestling with was question to the hardship case. And I know you've talked about the oversize of the lot and uh, you know I looked at it and said okay and when I was reviewing this I said is there must be some way that you could take a couple of feet in each direction and be compliant okay and, and, and I heard what you said tonight okay it's it's not easy I guess but if we you did. had to it could be done we did um, yeah. we did the first round um, and then and we met I mean we, we met quite a bit on this this was not right. a, a casual decision we really talked about it right. about the functioning in that space and talking about you know is your laundry in a closet off of off of the family room yeah and and that's really not something um, that's desirable and, and I don't and that's the other point that we truly don't think, and I realize there's so much between what the board has to consider and what's opinion and what's, you know, so this is where it's just a matter of true functioning in the home. Um, we are looking to improve Mary's life and make right. her comfortable as she, right. as she stays there. This is not an investment property. And I think the fact that it's been, again, her entire life has been on Lowe Street between these two homes, that's pretty clear. Mary doesn't want to go anywhere. She's got the support of her neighbors who are thrilled to have her in the neighborhood. We're all supporting all of this it was just the quirkiness of really sitting down and we came to this and, and we really felt that as a board as a as reasonable humans do we feel that the board will understand why we're really going for what we're going for it's not to build a big mansion it's not to build a, a, you know we're not adding a sauna room to the house of jacuzzi we're really talking about a, a minimizing so our first round we did do that we and glenn was very straightforward about things like look you've got to bring something back here. you've got to give me something you've got to show that you're willing to reduce here and we did um and the to, to my argument would be is i think we've got a five and a half foot or six foot counter for the laundry room you know washer dryer that's it that's not i don't feel like we were extravagant so when we really sat and said where can this come out of um you, know, you could have a 10 by 12 bedroom but again just ease and accessibility it's not it's it's so those rooms that we kind of said well let's really scale it back to i mean obviously it's a small home to begin with i, I don't want to oversize rooms and we're not looking for break rooms and we're not looking to uh, redo a kitchen right now the kitchen's very uh, we're really using the existing space in the home to its max and only adding what we needed uh, to, to really make it accessible usable um, would i conclude that the real reason why you are expanding this into lot coverage was really to make the garage bigger is that a major reason? It, we, it's it's bigger, but barely. Twelve and a half feet is really tight for a brush. That's interior. Um, we eliminated. We reduced the size of uh, of decks. Uh, it would. We were initially thinking how nice it would be to just have a a, a twelve by you know, fourteen deck off the back. It's gone. It's a landing. Uh, all of these types of things that we were willing to say, okay, but. And one could also argue, would the deck really have hurt anyone? But obviously, we're trying to be respectful of the numbers, and we're trying to go in the right direction. And it was a lot of talking and soul searching. I've, I've also known Mary uh, most of my life. And we, we were very clear about 
what are the goals, where can we, what do we feel is realistic to request, um, with still being respectful and not coming in here with like a full of small thing in hand and, and just kind of presenting what we're really dealing with. I'm sure the chair will tell you that uh, var variances are hard to get right. in this town. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we really review them very thoroughly and meticulously. Uh, but I'll get off of that now. As far as the, I'll get onto the special permit. As far as the special permit is concerned, I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, I mean, you still got a size setback that infringes on 15 feet, but it's better than what you had. Right. By inches, but it's still better than what you had. Okay, so you're not creating a new one. It's the only new nonconformity is the is the coverage, and uh, so I'll stop there for the moment. And that includes decks. Too. I know you're you're aware of that. That includes it's the not deck. Not just 200 square feet of living. How big is the deck? I mean, I've seen the drawing. Huh? 114 square feet. How much? 114. Okay. So again, I don't think we were excessive with that. Um, and we produced. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll be quiet for a while. Eric? I like the special permit aspect of it. I think that it's a nice project, and I, I think that under those performance standards, I, I don't think that you'd get. Um, too much of an argument out of anyone on the board, definitely not me. The variance though, you're probably getting the sense that that is what we are all circling around. And I think that right now you have 9% lot coverage. And I realize that's a very small lot. Um, but I think that to, to get the variance, it's not that, it's not that you don't make compelling like emotional um, arguments. It's just that those aren't really the ones that the statute um, itemizes. You know, the, the first criteria, there has to be something special about the lot that would warrant, you know, and, it, and really what you're asking for is an exception. Um, this just happens to be a small lot, which, you know, the statutes are, and case law is clear, is, is not enough on its own. Um, but like the classic example, if there's like ledge that you wouldn't be able to build on. Um, and I think that there's probably opportunities if you were to convert the deck into a patio instead that you could shave some, um, you know, the square footage off and, um, you know, diminish the coverage. I think that I, I completely understand that, you know, you're doing this and you're going through all of this so that what you have at the end is something that's completely usable and, and what you need. Um, but I don't know that, you know, not having the dimensions of a laundry room or anything like that necessarily rises to the level of getting a variance, you know. I think that if you get, you're, you're already tripling the space. So if we can find just, and like I said, if, if you took the deck and made it a patio, you would really just need to tweak it just a little bit to get there. And um, that's kind of where my thoughts are on it. So, that's all I have to. Okay. Um, I had uh, similar issues um, that Eric discussed. Um, I look at it and we're talking about 179.6 square feet difference between the 25 and the 27 percent lot coverage. Uh, the deck is 114 point, or 114 square. Um, we're not talking about a, a big difference between that and meeting the um, the 25 percent. If I go back to the variance aspect of it, um, the first two criteria are the most difficult to justify. And as Eric hit on it, that's the problem that exists supposedly in 40A, and this. This board, over the past many years, has always tried to stick with that. Um, only because that when you go into court, uh, if you can't prove those first two, two, or just one of the four criteria, you're gonna lose. So we try to keep very close to those requirements. And I think on the first two criteria, not the latter two, but the first two, um, you you fall short of that. Um, 
as the rest of the board members said, I don't have a problem with the special permit uh, in creating something as you mentioned here, but as I looked at it, um, shaving a little bit off of um, the garage area, all the way back into your laundry area um, by, and I haven't calculated it out, I mean you're the architect, you can do that, but if you can't get past the variance, the special permit doesn't mean anything. I, if I could, I'd like to make one point. So the plans that you have in front of you, and this was again under the advice of the building department, these are the larger footprint. This is where the, the these plans, as, as exists in Glen, it's had to do this. We actually, I'm very engaged, a structural engineer. Uh, we went through the process of develop, developing these plans so that in the very early stages we could work through everything that we would need to work through with the town, but as well as work with the subcontractors and get them as much information as they could use to get numbers accurate and all of that. So Glenn basically realized what we had and what we were presenting and he said, look, change, if you know how you can reduce it, get it accurate on the plot plan. So the plot plan is truly accurate to what we're proposing. And that is all the numbers that, we're, that we base all of these calculations on. So the one thing, when you look at the plans here, to Glenn's point, and I have to say I agree, it wouldn't even change the look of the elevation, wouldn't really change the look of the floor plan, but the existing garage wall from this plan actually is what we're proposing, what we've shown on the plot plan, is where it will be in order to meet the 15 foot setback. That's just as an example. So right now, this plan, this garage is actually drawn about 14 inches bigger than it actually, than what we're, what we're proposing. And that was just a matter of economics because we had gone back to Len and said, look, Mary's made quite an investment between all the engineering, et cetera, that's going into this and doing the, the energy calcs and the, the plans, rather than completely redoing every drawing and, and incurring that whole expense again, let's see if we're going to get approved because, again, it's something that means a lot to, we, we don't have the funds to be wasteful with this, we're really trying. So, Very much understood. So when you look at it, that's one thing to just think about, meaning it, it is tighter, well we're, we're saying we're going to work in a tighter footprint than what we're even showing. The unfortunate part is, if you can't present a set of plans to this board that it actually takes the vote on, and I think what you're hearing is that 27 percent is can be very difficult to get past. If you can't get that back to 25%, your option of going forward on any set of plans is going to be a waste of money and time. So, uh, in just a question to the board then, what would you advise if, if we were to sit and talk and say, what's our next step here? Um, I just want to, I obviously don't want to close out the progress we've made and have to start over again. What would the, does the board then advise us and say, look, if you're you bring it down to 25%, you have our feeling of, would, it, would we then be able to continue the process? We, we, the board can't um, do that. But what the board can offer you is an option. And perhaps one of the options are, is that you can continue the subject matter of this hearing so that you can go back to a date certain, and our earliest date second is August the 1st, which would perhaps allow you sufficient time to come up with modifications of what you have here on the architectural rendering. Um, but if you're coming back to the board, uh, if the board votes tonight to shut you down on the I'm just saying, if the board were to shut you down tonight on the special per on the um, variance, then you can't go forward any further, and you can't come back for two years. Right. So your options are continue, or take a leave to withdraw without prejudice, and come back if you think this is going to take more time. I'm not saying that you just need a month to do it. Uh, the continuances could run concurrently with a reasonable amount of time. Reasonable. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you what reasonable is, but you know what you're, what you're about to do. Uh, if if what you need is uh, maybe a continuous until August the first, and you don't meet that date, and you want to say I want to continue again, 
you could do that because I'm close. Uh, that is not, we, the board has done that in the past. So it sounds... Um, Before you do that though, we need to open up the public section right. of the meeting and then have you come back and you can discuss that. Um, but before we go any further, um, unless you wanted to now opt already, I have to open up the open portion of the hearing to the public. So anybody who wishes to uh, make mention, please stand up, state your name and address, and whatever you wanted to. Yes. So I'm Mary Ellen Killian. I'm 33 Lewis Street, so I'm two houses to the east of Mary. Um, so I just wanted to comment on it. The, the house that Mary is in and then the house to her west are two of the smaller houses on the street. And actually her first floor is probably from here to about here. And that is her first floor. So it is very tiny. Um, her garage that is on the um, uh, east side of the ho uh, house probably helped a car way back when the house was initially built. Um, but um, you don't have much on either side. I don't even know if Mary's ever gotten her car in there safely. <laughs> I don't even know if she's got it in there. But that is very, very tiny. Um, and then the only other thing, I just don't know if um, if you, you know, I don't think you realize it because you live in the house, but her lot actually, the topography actually sloped from west to east, and I believe I would say it's probably either a three or a four foot difference from the west side all the way down to the east fence. So I don't think you realize that you have that, but um, when you come on the front of the house, it's, it does not seem to be that much, but when you go to the back, it is a, a striking difference. Um, so I just wanted to um, make sure that you knew that, because I don't know if you get that. And then um, the, how, the proposal that she has, I do not think is going to affect the character of the neighborhood. That's all I know. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to weigh in? Yes. I'm Paul Dodge, 27 One North Road, across the street from Mary. And at 34 years, I know her father. Her father coached me in Little Way. Put in there. I've seen this house, house where she took her, her family took care of the elderly couple that lived in it. The thing is so tiny inside. The resale value of that house right now would be so minimal because without without her ever trying to make any improvements, you couldn't put a family in there. There's barely enough room in that house right now for one person. When her sister has to come down to stay overnight to catch flights as a stewardess, there's two people in that house, it's impossible to, to live. We have some structures in that neighborhood where additions have been put on. You guys are talking about 25% of the lot. I'm looking at some of the house lots in my neighborhood. Who's doing the, the math? I see people with houses that, that are squeezed in there that are, if I, if I went like this and flipped a coin, it would, it would hit the boundary line next door. So, I mean, and these are things that people people have done over the years without doing the special permits or the variances. They're coming to you, they're being very upfront. They're not trying to hide things. They're not doing things on the side. This project, this improvement to our house is going to do nothing but improve the neighborhood. The, the property values in the neighborhood and everything else. It's a structure that's been there for years. She's held off on doing some improvements to the outside just waiting to try and get this through. And I just really think, I mean, I, mean, I know fairings of that, but I was born in the sound, 61 years old, I've been in the sound. I know, as I was just telling Dennis, it was fairly new. You come to a town meeting, the biggest problem you're gonna have is you might end up with a concussion because you're gonna be banging heavy and stuff. 
things get backed up and people start looking at things. When you go out there, if you all went out there and you looked at the size of the house, and you looked at the size of the lot, she drives a little, an old Toyota RAV4 that I don't know how she gets out of the car when she puts it in the garage when she does it once a I couldn't get out of the car. I know that. She's living with a tiny house and she just wants to make it a little improvement. To me, 2%. I think there's people using probably 50% of their lot right now and they wouldn't in a town that even know about it. So I, I just think with Hagelin, she's already reduced her, her size that she wanted. She's just trying to make it something that she could live there. Same with myself. Didn't want to, we can't, you can't downsize in this town. I don't want to leave Reading. Mary doesn't want to leave Reading. You can't downsize a, a ranch or anything in this house, in this town. Because it's something for the same price, it's a lateral move. No, it's, you just can't do it. So, I mean, she's, for the hardship part of it, I think that's more important than any kind of percentage. She's lived in the neighborhood. This is the man that bought her family home. She lived in the neighborhood her entire life. She just wants to make it so she can live out her life in the neighborhood. And 2% is it? As a member, as a member of this community, someone who's lived here my whole life, we've we've given people two percent, we've given people ten percent use of variances for their lots. I don't think she's asking a lot. And I think if you if you want to sit here and you want to look at the actual the numbers and stuff like that, yeah, you can make a case for it. But the I, the whole purpose and the idea of what she wants to do is nothing against the town. I think that's two percent. If you went and talked to everybody in the town, you had a vote, people would look at you and say, better do it. I just you're not gonna get any backlash about that. And I just think it's unfortunate that it's postponed to it. it just keeps getting pushed off. So thank you. I can only make two statements. One, this board can only react to what is presented to it, which it has today. We can't look at any other property that's not our domain oh, and in terms of uh, if, if people are going beyond what they are legally able to do there are repercussions of that which I won't get into I so but but, but thank you for your input a 2%, a 2 difference is not that much and uh, uh, with, a, with a deck you know what I mean that's what you want to an outdoor place Yep, we hear you. Any, anyone else? Hearing none. Uh, uh, let's say one thing. Uh, my name is Tom O'Connor. I'm uh, Mary's brother. Um, <clears throat> this process started many, many years ago. And um, when we finally got the plans ready to present to the uh, building department, I met with uh, the commissioner and he went through the whole process. He was very good about patient about showing me what to do, how to do it, go through these steps. He looked at the plans and said, it will be a problem right out of the gate. And I think at that time, we, it might have been as high as 33%. And he's like, I'll tell you right now, Tom, it's not gonna work. You gotta go try to do what you gotta do to, to make this thing smaller to get up to 25%. So we went back with Danny and Mary and talked about it. And it shrunk to 31%. And said, that's not gonna work, went back. 29%, now we're down to 27%, and we're gonna to get to the point where if we go to 25%, some of these rooms are gonna be, they're not even gonna be, I won't say habitable, but they're just not usable to the point, you know, to make it comfortable to move around a room like that. If there was ever a time that you have to put a wheelchair through a house, try to put that through an old house it's in, in the 50s, it's never gonna happen. So with the other thing that we, I was kind of surprised about with it, is that the town counts outside uh, decks and landings. I mean, you have to have a landing if you come off a, anything above three feet. So, I mean, those get added in where before. Stoops are not counted in. Excuse me? Stoops coming up stairs for opening doors, they are not calculated in. They're not counted in. Okay, well, I thought this one was, I thought the front door and the back was, that got reduced there too. So, um, we have honestly gave an honest, honest effort to try to make this as small as we could and make the house comfortable 
Um, I don't, me personally, I would ask in 2%. When, if it's 2% of a house that's 3,000 or 4,000 square feet, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of property. You're talking about a small house that's, um, it might be 24 by 20 or 24 by 24. It's not a big house for the original uh, property. So um, I was just hoping that we'd come here, the board could be a little bit lenient with the 2%, which is not, like I said, I don't think it's asking a lot. Um, obviously, it's it's up to the board and the final decisions on it. But um, we come in with good conscience, saying we're not asking for much. I don't think, and, but we'll have to uh, leave it to you, and we'll do the best we can. And that's what we've done all along, and try to be open and, uh, and upfront, and asked any minute, try to make this as smooth as possible. And it has dragged out and dragged out for a long time. But part of it is, you know, just not knowing the process. So. You know, um, but we're learning on the way. And this is what we came to you guys with, thinking that this could possibly work. And we'll just leave it up to the board. Thank you. Anyone else, any board members want to um, make additional comments or shall we go back to the petitioner? And, uh, yeah. I have a question. Um, I'm trying to read the plans and it's a little small so I just want to make sure I, I can read this correctly in the first floor floor plan do I see two dining areas is that correct it, it's 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 just showing that it's one continual room okay the, the front dining the front dining room um, you literally cannot you if, if you're sitting in a chair yep you can't move around the table so okay that would be when, when we say dining area that would be where would you realistically want to be to go to, to actually sit at a table? But if you also look, there's no bar at the counter, there's no peninsula, there's no, it's, it, there's. And I, I also see a family room and a living room. Is that, that's correct, right? Again, but notice where the staircase is. So 20 by 22, the staircase is in the back corner of the house. You have to get to that room. So, so what you're saying, essentially, the front living and the front dining aren't really usable you'd to, rooms. You'd have to remove the entire chimney stack and relocate the stair, okay. which just it becomes astronomical. And then the other question I had was, on the first floor, there's a four-season and a three-season porch. That's correct? Yes. In addition to outside deck space the, as well. Yes. And, the, the porch and those are all you're considering, without a variance, this wouldn't be a reasonable use of the property unless you had all of that. It would be used, and it, it's truly what the homeowner is looking for. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Thanks. So, I don't have any further comment. Eric, no. Um, <clears throat> I, you have to tell us what you want us to do. We can either, as I said, we can move forward and take a vote, uh, in which case we'll have to take two votes. One is on the um, variance and one is on the special permit, provided the variance passes. Uh, the second option is for continuance. And the third option is to withdraw, take a um, withdrawal without prejudice, um, take a leave to withdraw, that is, um, and come back at a later time. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we're left with no choice. But I, I understand we do have a choice, but we'll we'll take we'll do the continuance. Okay. Um, and the I th I think what you're reading from the board is that um, that two percent it doesn't seem like an awful lot, but it is as far as Chapter Forty A goes, and as far as the town. A variance says that you've changed now your structure and your structure on your lot. And that isn't for just your lifespan, that is for into perpetuity, uh, whoever owns the house all the way down the road. And that's why variances are so critical in uh, this state and the board takes it that way too. And if you can't meet those first four, if you can't meet those four individual criteria, um, it has a problem with it. And I, and I think that's what you're reading. Um, but the only way to find out definitely is to take a vote. And I'm not so sure that you want to do that uh, at this particular time. Not that we can't do it, but uh, by doing a continuance, you can go back and see if you can shave off basically 179.6 square feet someplace um, 
thing come back to us and um, you tell us what you think is an appropriate date that you would like to come back. We meet two, twice a month, the first and the third Mondays of each, uh, the first and third Wednesdays of each month. Was I under the understanding the first available is August? Is that right? July is out because we have a 40B, uh, and the 40DB takes preference because it takes a year to complete that 40B. And that we're talking about 100, the proposed 120 units. I would, I would say August, we, we don't, I don't see the need to delay it further than that. August 1? Kristen, do we have anything if on the agenda? chance of doing it sooner. I mean, one. But that's really the Okay. Yes, I just want with a question. You're making a formal request to continue the subject matter of this hearing until the 1st of August, 2018. Yes, we Am are. I hearing that? Yes, we are. Do I hear a motion? I move to accept petitioner's request. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, you have until the 1st of August. Uh, try to get your plans in um, early enough uh, so that the board will have a little bit of time to look at it before you All right. come in. Great. Okay. Thank you for your time. Will you write up the first one? Be happy to. Okay. Um, excuse me, do we have other business before the board? Minutes. Just a minute. Okay, we can. Um, first guy was so eloquent. Pardon me? The first guy was so eloquent. <laughs> 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 Um, what were they, Christian? The minutes? Yeah. 5, 2, and 5, 6, 8. Okay, that's what I had. Did have anybody had a chance to read them? I didn't. Yeah. I'll take a few minutes and we'll look at uh, 5, 2.
here for? Yeah, I have one change. Okay. Uh, it says member not on the very front sheet. Member not present, David Trinino. But down on the topics of discussion, he called the meeting to order. I think it was John that did that. Yep. Tony. He did. And he got up and he left. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'm taking my marbles and going home." Right. Yeah. Right. I had a correction. I don't know how I spot this. I never do this. On page four, third line down. Mr. Mercier, think that should be Miss? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Third line. Yep. On page four, you got it right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I did. That's circle the only thing that I saw. Yeah, I did circle that. Um, motion to accept. Move to accept the minutes as modified. And a second. Second. In favor? One, zero, zero. Okay. Um, 6. Put Eric's name in there on the, at the top only. All the others put Nick's name in. 
All the other votes. That should be Eric. That should be Eric. Hmm. That's Eric, too. Okay. I didn't find anything. Nick? I'm good. Motion? Moved with the changes. Second. 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 In favor? Where's your result? Good job again, Chris. Jim. Uh, we seem to we seem to lose a lot of trees on the assessors. Um, we do the assessors list of people, right. um, and then we duplicate it twice over. Could we just get the um, one small page of Who's on this? Because we still we don't even do the readings on it. Yeah. We can talk to the assessor's office about it, but I think that's a set procedure that they follow. I don't know if it's required or not. Yeah, I don't think it's covered in 40A. Right. As part of the package, I think the package is left up to the individual communities, but I don't know. That's why I'm just throwing well, that out. So when you certify the bonus package, you only want just the list? Well, no, no, no. For the, the what you prepare for the board, the packages or whatever, mm -hmm. um, just leave the out all but one page of the butters. One page of the butters. So we would know who it is. But other than that, uh, we get copies of the labels and. Right, yeah. Yeah. Labels I need mean, yeah. it. <laughs> you can ask. I mean, I just throw that out. Yeah, here. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so. Okay, anything else before the board? Yeah, I just, you know, I was a little surprised to hear David was leaving the board. Mm -hmm. But that leaves us with five people. Exactly. Which could become a problem, okay? I've As already, we move on through the I've year. I've already talked to a number yeah. of people, Gene being one. He went to the uh, town manager, uh, went to the selectmen, and last night um, we have two associate members who were elevated to full members, so now we have five full members. Right. They also um, appointed a person uh, as an associate member. I didn't catch the name because it went so fast, um, so I know that I would assume as of July 1 or whenever the person is sworn in, they would come and sit before the with the board here. Um, I don't know what the experience is or anything else. Mr. Ensminger is the uh, individual who is in charge of getting all this together through the through the VAC volunteer advisory commission or whatever, which reports to the selectmen through uh, Mr. Ensminger. Okay, I haven't heard anything about it, so. Okay. It wouldn't be too bad, though, for us to continue to work the town I'm talking about to find a seventh. Absolute, member, okay? Absolutely. Because absolutely. it's a high probability that this guy will not continue after 2020. I mean, I'm going to be 85 years old, okay? And, and my health is starting to go this way. So I just say start thinking, start making the call. Mm hmm. And I think uh, that was well received. Um, so uh, I think the selectmen earlier in the meeting last night talked about that, but I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that earlier part of it. But I, there was a mention by that that they are aware that there is a problem in staffing the, the ZBA only because of the 40 Bs that are there. 40 Bs take. Mm -hmm. Usually a year to, um, it's been running a year. I mean, 
forty B says one hundred and eighty days plus extensions that are agreed to. But I mean, the reality is that it runs about a year, plus or minus, mostly minus. But, so I'm, I'm sure that they're aware of this, and they are going to continue to look. The other thing, the other comment I would put out on the table is that uh, you know we have the forty B coming up on July eighteenth. Eighteenth. And from what I hear, we're getting a lot of change to what they want to do. And I yes. hope we're not going to see all that documentation at the July last minute. 8th, 17th. Um, all right. Should have it within the next week or so. Good. In That's before that was going to be my over. question. What do we expect to see? So the they new material? acknowledge that it should be before the June 28th deadline we gave them. I still haven't heard really anything back in about a week or so now. Me and Jean are reviewing the peer review file and requesting changes to be more presentable in a more fashionable way to the audience, but... Because it's only four weeks away. Right, so from the developer standpoint though, I haven't gotten anything yet, so still working on that. Okay. But I imagine that will be within the coming week or two, so... And I again voiced uh, the concern of the board, at least what I heard was the concern of the board, mm -hmm. was that um, the board is the official mm -hmm. uh, entity making the decision on this this and any other 40Bs. It is not the neighborhood group and right. the workshops and whatever. So if they want to get to where they want to go, the board needs to know this. This is not a closed right. hearing. It needs to be opened. Which is one of the problems because the neighborhood group has already requested changes to these new ideas and plans. And well, this I is think they're working on addressing additional comments given to them from the neighborhood group. But I agree that it's not the neighborhood they need to be good with it's you guys so and I don't know how to get that information to Mr. Regante and right. the developer other than to say uh, you know if if things fall apart it's going to fall apart because the board is not aware of this it, which means you're extending the time factor mm -hmm. and we possibly could not make that and mm -hmm. what if what happens is the board members feel that the, the direction that that's going is not necessarily in the best interest of the town as a whole mm -hmm. because that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that has been, I kind of sent that message again. I don't know if it fell on deaf ears or whatever, but at least it's there. Right. We need time to look and we need time to discuss and a good portion of that discussion might be amongst us at the hearing, at the next hearing on the 18th, yep. and the input from the public may be minuscule or minimal mm -hmm. compared to our concerns. I would agree with that. And I think another concern that will have to be addressed is now the peer review will have For to traffic. Kind of be readdressed with the, these proposed changes um, that are pretty substantial. So, <laughs> I don't know how many times we've brought that up? I mean, you know. <laughs> So whatever it's their their dime. So yep, we'll just have to wait and see. And, and, and I hope you're right, Andrew, that um, this is going to be done in an efficient manner um, and complete enough so that we have at least um, ten to fourteen days to look at this before <laughs> action comes before us. Absolutely, they're tomorrow. I know. Do, so I know. I will reach out to them either tomorrow or early next week to gauge when they think that this is happening. And then you might, if you wish to send forward our mm -hmm. concerns. Mm -hmm. And I have so. in the past, yes. Okay. So I will continue that. And okay. Anything else before the board this evening? No? I don't think so. Are there any other motions on the, to be heard? To adjourn. Do I have a second? <laughs> second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. We are adjourned. Awesome.